Hello. Oh my God. Welcome, Dora. Hello. You're the first one in. How are you tonight? Oh, hi. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, um, I'm all right. I'm 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 good now for this hour. This is such a special time. Thank you for being here. Lips is trying to connect right now. Slowly, everybody will come. Like you, you know. What time is it in Kazakhstan right now? Oh uh, well, it's <laughs> half past two half in the morning. Past two in the morning. Bless yeah. your sweetheart for being here. I know. I'm not sure why he's having trouble, but eventually he does. He does make it on. There's been lots of people here. Um, I know you've been following my story pretty closely. Um, yeah. For that, I really appreciate it. Um, while he's connecting, I wanted to ask. What is the healthcare kind of? Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. I. Hi. Nice to see your face. This is Thora Thorheim from Holy Dragons, all the way from Kazakhstan, one of my longest supporters and best friends. She is, it's 2 30 in the morning there now. She's joining yeah. us. Stayed up. I'm quite it. sleepy here. I'm <laughs> quite sleepy. <laughs> so she might not be alert. I'm really glad <laughs> you two finally got a chance to meet and say hello. So go for it. Have you ever been to Kazakhstan, Lips? No. <laughs> no. Would you go there? If they pay me. <laughs> You'll go. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit today while we wait for the others. Um, we have some pretty strict, crazy laws in Canada when it comes to our healthcare system outside of COVID, which we've been talking a lot about. We have long wait times. We have no family doctors here. Is that a problem where you are? No, no, I don't think so. There's no shortage of doctors or, or anything, eh? Uh, well, yes, I think so. We have lots of doctors, but sometimes their qualifications, uh, I have questions about their qualifications, so I try to avoid doctors as soon as I can. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Um, welcome. How are you? Oh, we can't hear him yet. Well, I think mm -hmm. um, w we've changed the qualifications of our doctors as well so that your family doctor is basically just a referral system. If you have a nose issue, you go to a nose specialist. If you have an eye issue, you go to an eye. They just refer, refer. And they are, when I was a kid, I don't know about you, Lips, but your family doctor did everything and sometimes even did house calls. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's yeah. my grandma had that. It was the time that the house call. Yeah, right up in and because they did it for my grandma her whole life, they ended up doing it until she passed and would come to the house, right? Because she wouldn't come to the doctor's office. Hello, and, gang. Uh, hi, Robert. Hi there. I want to introduce you to one of my well, lips, of course, you know, lips. Um, one of my good friends, Thora Thorheim from Holy Dragons. She has done so much for my stuff. She's joining us all the way from Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. It's 2 wow. in the morning there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. How you doing? Hi. She's sleepy. <laughs> hey, lips, how you doing, brother? So, um, Can anybody hear me? We can yes. Be, yes. We, what are you doing, Lips? What are you doing? Yeah. Ah, that is important. I have, I have my dried, I have a bowl, and I have a bog sitting here because, you know, <laughs> um, I don't know about how everybody else feels about it. I know it's a touchy issue across the states and Canada, but it's fully legal here. It, it's really getting integrated as medicine, which I think is important, and across the states slowly and slowly. It's unfortunate that the freaking Bible Belt is the Bible Belt, 
and they probably never <laughs> will legalize it in certain places, right? It's federally illegal, yet legal state to state. It's so it's so stupid. I was mad that America legalized it first, but we did it way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what well, I right. miss, and I was thinking about this earlier, is the 420 marches where half a million people would go from Queens Park up to the Parliament and back. And, you know, the party of that all day event was just insane. Now there's nothing to do on 420 but sit home and eat store bought yeah, cupcakes. Now, now, now you're <laughs> 420 and going on the street and not worried about anybody saying it shit. I know that's all we were fighting for, but I I like the fight and the party and all that it gathered and the people that it gathered. But anyways, um, Toronto is a city that supports its arts like you wouldn't believe. Like every weekend, there's a festival, whether it's Gay Pride, mm -hmm. whether it's you know Carabana, whether it's a food festival, the jazz festival, the blues festival, a Harney Krishna parade will go by it. Mm -hmm with no warning you know and every street corner is filled with a busker that the city supports so well, you about, about three summers ago uh like rob's my, my drummer is a painter like he, oh wow. he canvases and stuff and they had an art an art show in 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 the park in downtown toronto New well, they asked him to put his booth there but in in addition Anvil did a show at oh, the art yeah. show. Wow. Why are they nice. Which was fucking awesome. <laughs> nice. You, know, you have to apply to do these things, you know, or they pick special people like that, right? You know, every subway station has a really good you know, performer. Some of them get picked up and join into bands. Then you go downtown. Mm -hmm. I love the Eaton Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're ever in Toronto, yeah, uh, there's, okay, a major intersection. So you have all these musicians trying to bust for money, right? And compete. <laughs> there's one guy that's been down there for I don't know how many years with no arms and no legs. Do you know this guy, mm -hmm. Lips? No, I mean, I, I really don't go down town yeah, very often. Yeah. The Eaton Center, right at Young and Dunda. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I know it's like it's like a, it's fucking crazy there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, drumming competitions. It's lame people. in comparison to Tokyo, but crazy. still, it, <laughs> crazy. But this guy has no arms and no legs, and he plays the same crappy song on um, his keyboards. You know, he gets drunk uh, proceeding towards the end of the day, you know, and he'll he'll get more aggressive for change. But he's he hilarious. He gets a couple more extra bottles of Aqua Velva. Yeah, right? right? But so, they so don't get, kick so him out. So has he gotten any better out of all the years he's played the same no. song? Or no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. And then there's one guy in Kensington Market. He goes every day, rain or shine, snow or not. And he's a little bit insane, so he's kind of hard to approach. But he's probably the best hand drummer I've ever seen in my entire life. And he stands in the same spot. And people yeah. just know not to kind of bother him and just drop money. And he'll go and he'll sit in the pot cafe and smoke a few joints and go back out and drum. And and I, I posted in um, my last plea for help that really painful video recently. And there's a still shot of a guy hand drumming. And his core, because that's all he does is stand there and drum for like, 365 days a year you know <laughs> he's wow. so built yeah. right but i love watching people like that play i love watching and finding oh, the matter. undiscovered it's, people it's 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 you know if you're I miss if you're really family. down on 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 cash yeah and you're you you can perform i mean busking is it's better than going up to people hey man you got a spare dime what they do every three steps it's got a lot more taste and 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 class to sit there and play your instrument and people donate to you, right? Yeah. And Which you know, I've given my last in dollars cities, away because I saw cities, something it's so really good. In big really common. In big cities, it's really commonplace. I mean, obviously, I mean, in places like London, England, uh, there are specific there are specific uh, places in the in in mm -hmm. the subway system there that people sit and they have their place they have their yeah. place to perform right oh man and they'll protect you with I, their I, 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 I might actually you might actually have to pay you might actually have to pay for your spot 
mm -hmm. to, to, to the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? To somebody, City. I mean, it might, might be partly uh, subsidized by the government. I really don't know, but I know that you could go on the same subway at the same time every day and you'll see the same performer. Yeah. And in fact, if wow. you go one step further, they have, they have performers that get on certain trains and some of these trains have no doors to separate the whole train. So they, they can, they, their, their audience at, at rush hour is they walk mm -hmm. up and down this big long train playing their instruments, yes. singing, yes. karaoke, mm -hmm. whatever, and mm -hmm. you give them change. And these are these are common things, and and to a certain Beautiful level, things. And, and admittedly, it's wonderful entertainment. Mm -hmm. now, entertainment on the on the on the subways. There's I mean, a I forget I where know, I saw it. It's better than doing nothing. Through COVID, <laughs> people will are trying to do this. They'll go acoustic. They'll stand at the end of your driveway, and the family inside can come sit outside pay them the fee to come and do a private, you know, busker performance in front of the house and they go door to door, neighbor to, to neighborhood, just trying to spread some music. I also think there's nothing stopping you from going out on the corner and just standing there and spreading some love. There's just nothing. What can they do, right? Wear a mask, do it safely, do it, do it well. Um, if my efforts go completely unheard again and i run out of steroids i think i'm going to try and gather as many people in the um park in london at the university to stand six feet apart and play music i'm going to play the video that i've been sharing around of me trying to get my steroids and i'm going to try and call the media this is this will be my last ditch effort because i really don't know what else to do we are boggled by stupid I, I, laws. I, would, I can yeah. honestly tell you, you know, you're, you know what a best bet for that this kind of this kind of thing would be probably <laughs> City TV. I have emailed them. I have called them. I have hit every. I've every MP. I have called everybody over the last few years. I have hit every music platform I can think of. You know, I just on top of getting people for my shows, I just lay here twenty four seven trying to figure out what to do and how to get it out, and it's all I do. And I cannot believe that I've gotten no response. That somebody can watch this show and just miss the heart of it. I don't get it. And I remember a long time ago, Lips, you're like, nobody cares. I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> they do. All around the world, they care, and it's the musicians. And I guess if that's I know, all but, that matters. But, 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 but I, 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 hate to be, I hate to be so cynical. I mean, the world could be so callous. I mean, you could watch some of these videos of, did anyone all those people standing around watching this guy getting murdered by the police not one, one person does a freaking even thing challenge it they didn't challenge it in any physical format at all now if you've got 20 or 30 people going hey get off the fucking guy now yeah yeah, Instead we're recording you. We're recording you or up, anything. Or one yeah. person comes up and a want. So, hey, what do you think? Maybe you should get off the guy, right? It's like, why do people fucking see what's going on? Why don't people because people stay distant from each other? These are these are mm -hmm. inherited fucking uh, uh, things about humanity. We feel fear and then we back off. These are the things that that the human nature does. It's not me. So why do I don't want to get involved. And I think if you live in I, a large that, metropolis, a there is no empathy. Very it's little true. Empathy. If you live in a large metropolis or you live in a, in a place like India where everybody is starving and hungry, I mean, if you don't do that, it will kill you if you're an empath. If you actually feel the pain of everybody around you that you, you know, walking up the street, how could you walk up the street? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Kelly, actually, you know, there well, might I mean, be some... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Kelly, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hey, remember I told you I was going to reach out to my doctor friend. Um, 
he's going to give me a call. We're going to talk. But I've also talked to another friend of mine uh, in the Kung Fu family. And there's some other um, drugs that uh, may help you. I'm going to get you in touch with this lady, okay? And uh, we might be able to send you something. We had this talk with Lips this morning, the sweetie, um, mm -hmm. about steroids and the ones that I need. I need these steroids to live. That's the bottom line. You can do all yeah, the research you another, want. I need mm -hmm. to know the name of them. I sent that to you yesterday. Okay. But but all yes, right. these steroids are called corticosteroids, aldosterone, mm -hmm. and which is known as flucortisone and hydrocortisone. We're talking about hydrocortisone here, people. And it's well, on a controlled substance list. Hold on. It's on a controlled substance list because if you don't have this condition, it's very dangerous. These are not yeah. anabolic steroids. Okay. These are not mind altering drugs in any way. It's crazy. Are, are these drugs not generally prescribed here? In it the is, it is so rare that the doctors never have prescribed them and the side effects to somebody who doesn't have it are very dangerous. The fact that I've been on them for five years, even if I was misdiagnosed five years ago, means I have Addison's disease now because I'm steroid dependent. Not giving these steroids to me will kill me. So I cannot believe the situation I'm stuck in. We're talking about hydrocortisone, and flu to where'd cortisone. Where'd you get the prescription for this to begin with? That's a, another question. That in I the wondered. States. So my case started in the States. I went to every major institution in the States. I spent half a million dollars at the Mayo Clinic. I have a file this thick from the Mayo Clinic, which is a top <laughs> institution in the world. And yet they won't read it because it's American. They want to re-diagnose. They want to oh, re-inform oh, themselves. Yeah. And I'm hey, like, lips. what the? No. Lips. Lips. No. I offer lips. lips. Robert here. I offered to Kelly to uh, buy her plane ticket to come back here to Florida and stay at her friend's house and see the doctors. She's just supposed to get me some information so we can make that happen. I have a fear that you have no idea what that will cost. A plane ticket? A few well, the plane dollars. ticket is minimal. I can buy a plane ticket. <laughs> it's the medical yeah. care without insurance is outrageous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but don't, aren't you already in the Mayo Clinic or whatever out here? No, I have lost my American citizenship yeah, to on, divorce. Can you can you go down there and get your prescription? I can go to certain places and get my my prescriptions like that. The two places I can do that are West Virginia, Huntington, West Virginia, and fucking Oklahoma. So that's where we got to send you. That's where you got to go. That's well, where tomorrow, we're to yeah. Yeah, if I could afford a medical transport and just get on a flight, like a medical flight, because technically I'm not really allowed to fly, high risk of aneurysms, but I would do it anyways. So yes, uh, the uh, idea uh, of having to fly to Oklahoma or fucking to West Virginia for steroids is unbelievable. I want to sue my government. I want this out to the media. That is fucking criminal. That's right? crazy. It's yes, and the more you research it, I will prove it because it's so unbelievable. It's so okay, unbelievable. Well, I think that I think that there's, I mean, if it's coming down to the wire, you got to somehow that trip has to happen. I am lucky enough. If that's I, where the prescription is, you've got to make your way there. Somewhere. I am lucky enough I can cross the border at any time because I have a medical need and, an, and mm -hmm. a history in the U.S. So I could always go back and forth. But so you're yes, not it can happen. On a flight. You're not allowed on a flight. I shouldn't. I'm mm -hmm. against medical advice to fly, but I will do it anyways. It's a risk, but I'll, I'll do it because it's the fastest way there. My, I have a friend who will drive me, but then it's, you know, getting across the border. So as soon as I can figure it out, yes. West Virginia is so cheap. I have the money to go there and is rent there a, a place. Is there, is there a, let's say, like if you, if you flew, if you flew to, is there someone in the New York area, let's say? New York, the laws around this are the well, same. Actually, if, you're, if you're going to Virginia, that's West that's Virginia. Hour, that's like an hour and a half flight. Okay, I know, 
but the laws state to state have the same restrictions as some in Canada. The only, like all of New York, you, there's no emergency shot in the hospital. All of uh, Michigan, all of, this is crazy. So this is why NORD, my, the National Organization for Rare Disorders, which I'm a member of in both countries, is fighting to get Addison's disease awareness across North America so that every hospital carries the emergency shot, so that every doctor understands this disorder and what the prescriptions are needed because people die every day. So state to state, the, the closest place for me to get these shots for sure, and my, my steroids is Huntington, West Virginia and Kingston, Oklahoma. So with all my heart and behind the scenes, beautiful people like Robert and my mama bear and people are trying to do this. So let's make it happen, I guess, I guess, I don't know. You know, I fly out of Toronto or I drive across the border and fly from, you know, Michigan or, or, or um, uh, Buffalo and then go to those places. I don't know which is easier or cheaper, but that's, that's I think, what I'm going to have to do. Then once I have a month's supply of my steroids, I have a month to figure it's, it's, it out. It's entry into the states that you've got to... That, that is I've already called the border, cool. made the appointment, made the clearing. I can get across tomorrow. They know me a history. Funny story. Last time I crossed, I, I was in a cab. And at that time, I do. I mean, I don't. I, I don't understand the. Con okay, uh, an hour. And a, you you'll get, you'll get a flight. You'll get. You can get down there. You got to be able to get down there. You got up here. How'd you get up here? Drive. I flew. You flew. You know, fly back. <laughs> can I, I don't take a bus home? <laughs> Uh, I've taken the bus across the country. You don't know how many times I've crossed the yeah, country no, for I'm care. Yeah. I could do it. I can do it. It's just a matter of There's also, figuring. I don't know whether you're allowed to take the bus down to the States. No, um, <laughs> but I can take a cab across, the, like I can clear border. Then a cab can take me across the bridge and then I can take a bus from there. Right. Right. So, um, the last time I, I took a cab across and they put those spikes in case you're a runner right behind the tires oh, and they wow. go, okay, you're good to go. And they'd forget <laughs> to unta untake them back. The cab backs up, they pop two of the cab's tires. And then we spend all day running around looking in their trunks for a jack when right behind us the whole time was a major one for big, big heavy cars. And we just turned around after two hours and I went, that's not a mop, is it? That's a fucking jack, isn't it? And they're like, oh my god. When you go do this, when you go do this run, you just have to figure out <coughs> whether you're gonna stay overnight and catch the flight back the next day, or whether you're just gonna go to directly to the where you gotta go to stuff, what you gotta do and go, go come back. I'm gonna go this directly is a, this where is I an go. issue though. This is an issue, but if you're coming back with even though they are prescription, I guess I guess they're going to be in a prescription bottle with your name on it. Yeah, they to can't get, take them from me. No, nope. really can't take your way. No, no, no. And the thing is, they can only give me one month supply at a time. Oh no! So a month from now, with no family doctor, I'm going to be back in the same fucking boat. This is my life. This is why people give up. This is why I lose my partners, my friends. My, oh, you know, oh, it's oh, just too hard. You need to go get them. I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. I've been know. on the wait list here since um, uh, October 2018. I've been on the wait list in London since uh, returning again for since October. There are no available family doctors in London whatsoever. And the restrictions on who can prescribe need to be changed. And this is an outrage. Yes, opiates have been overprescribed. Yes, antidepressants have been overprescribed. But you are taking the right of a qualified doctor to actually make decisions. There are good doctors out there who know what they're doing. And to take the ability away to give them pain medicine or mental health medicine or whatever is just hurting our general public trying to save us from an opioid crisis. you got to have a doctor. Oh, I don't know, man. You still you need somebody up. You need some connection up here. 
Because mm -hmm. when you go down to the States, you could go see the doctor that prescribed the stuff and he could he could actually he can actually communicate with whoever you know up here. I just made a, a you recording. Need, you need the physical shit. Up here. I have I have my full records. The guy just refuses to look at them. And I've been to one hospital eight times. They refuse to look at Mayo Clinic shit. I have the Mayo Clinic now. I just phoned them today. I know, crazy. Just phoned them today and said, look, I'm going to the ER after this show. And I want you to fax my care plan, my treatment, all the drugs I need right to the ER. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to make them listen. God bless right. the Mayo because, Clinic. Because, you know, you've got, a, you've got a patient on your way to the emergency. I, I, yeah, I made they gotta a, help you. Mm -hmm. they got to help you in the emergency room. They have I to. Made, they've refused me three times my steroids. Mm -hmm. I made a vid. That's why I made that video. And I made a complaint. I went in on it and said, look, I made a video. You're going to kill me and it will go to the news. They said, come back to the ER today. I'm like, are you crazy? This is the scariest thing in the world. And I have nobody to come with me, nobody to speak for me when I can't verbalize because I go into immediate episodes where I can't oh, talk or move. Fuck. I mean, I, you know, I, I, well, we can't help you because we're not there. I know, right? Mm -hmm. I know. I know. But, you know, all of this is going into evidence and it'll go up on a story. It's going across, you know, many support groups for advocacy to make change. So God bless you all, your angels. You have no idea. Even if you can't help uh, me, it's going to do something. It's got to. And, and you know, I, I wished on, on so many levels it would break just for the music because talking about the music so much more fun. I can't, see them. I can't see them in an emergency situation, but, but, and they know the answer to remedy the problem, and they're not going to allow it. It's because I, it's I so I, rare. I just, I, I don't Their whole so. careers, they've never right. seen it, and, and that's on tape, too. They've never seen a narcoleptic episode. They've never seen an Addison's patient. They've never prescribed these meds right, in their entire oh, yeah, career. Well, whatever. They're, it's a small-time fucking hospital. What the fuck? Right? This is why I've been recording. Also, you're not going to see. You're not going to see oh, rare, yeah. rare occurrences and rare stuff. You're going to see broken, broken bones right. and, right. and and arms and right. you know, you know, right. somebody cut themselves. You know, some of the. I have not gotten any medical care or scans or treatment for any of my other things since 2017, just chasing down these medications and treatments for narcolepsy. Uh, you've, you've got your own hip now, right? You've got yes. Hip now. Yes. Well, now it's just a, now it's just a matter of time. I know, it's almost the case of, you're almost right. If you go into the emergency department and you say, I'm fucking... I'm having episodes. I'm, I'm lucky I made it here. It may even be the truth. You've got to, you guys got to help me, and you and you're gonna already receive a fax about me. So help. So help. I showed up at the walking clinic. Um, they were rude. I almost walked out. A, a, a nurse who had overheard me come in. She she grabbed me at the door as I was leaving. And she said, don't go back. My mom has Addison's disease. I know exactly what you're going through. Please go back in. So I go back in. They say, these are dangerous drugs. I'm not really supposed to give them to you. We'll give you one month's supply. And he referred me to the internal doctor. That was the appointment I recorded and have been sharing. I would, that's what it took to get that appointment. Holy fuck and then he refuses you too yeah and now they're saying come back to that hospital i'm like are you crazy or i start all over again in another hospital i don't know what to do so i'm gonna go back there i'm gonna record everything and i'm gonna share it with everybody because it's so unbelievable and if i die i hope the guy that goes to the news because there is no reason for this none you know, we're talking about hydrocortisone. If I could take it through the skin, like in a cream, I'd go buy it. But it's not the same. It's not the same. No, that's not the same. But that's what we're talking not about. At all. But that, I mean, and even the, and the levels, foolish. the levels of, of the, the potency of the hydrocortisone in the tubes that you use for skin irritations are are a tenth as powerful yeah. in Canada yeah. as they are in the mm -hmm. USA. 
or anywhere And if else. I get sick or I get a cold or I get a flu or I get nauseous or I get diarrhea or I get stressed, I have to do what's called stress dosing, which means I have to take four times the amount the next day, three times the amount the next day. I am on a highest level of steroids you can imagine. To take me off of them right now, the shock, and I'm just, I'm taking fractions. I'm actually shaving pills down and just taking quarter of amounts of what I need to live right now. That's how I came to them yesterday. And they, I can't believe they turned me away. I can't believe it. And the worst part was in the middle of the appointment, the guy goes, oh, my second job is, he goes, what do you do for therapy? I go, actually, I do this show. And he goes, oh, my other job is a musician. And I go, mm -hmm. that's funny. I said, I, I do this show with Lips and it's so much fun and so many other great people. And uh, he, I go, the only person I know in town is Brian Bolivar. And, I, and he goes, oh, I know Brian too. He's friends with my brother-in-law. And I told him about the fact that he took some merch from me that I had him decide for charity and asked if he could keep it. And he never gave me any merch back in return. And I've never talked to him again. But we laughed about that. And he, go, he laughed about how many people he knew who had bad by Volver stories. And then we go on and I mean, we're doing really well. And then all of a sudden it just goes to shit. You know, but um, the fact that it's now being shared with the musicians. I'm like, that's that's kind of funny too, you know. Um, I know, and I did actually post under Rock and Joke and Talk, and I went to Brian's house and did my only live interview ever was with Brian Volmer. so it's up there. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I go to the doctor, and we're talking about him. It's just weird. Like there's such a beautiful six degrees of separation across my page and across my shows and my life and I think this is just destiny so Robert when we're done here I'm going to call you and we're going to try and figure out where the best place to go is I'm really having a hard time trying to get people to understand that they need to return my calls now that this is emergency where this is this is it mama bear is probably the safest place to go to out in Oklahoma but it is the farthest right so once I have those steroids I live a somewhat normal life and I can kind of probably come out to Florida do the album and then come back I really could the difference to life with steroids and life without is oh I hear you yeah so we'll figure out what we're gonna do bless you all for everything you've ever done Thora has donated some incredible music and full concert performances all the way from Kazakhstan. And I think um, it's one of the most beautiful things. They're up on my page. Um, I really wanna add them to the, con I don't know if you can add live performances to a compilation album or to an album, but um, I'd really like to do that. Plus a song if she's willing that. to donate one. Mm -hmm. You know, does that work well? Do you guys think putting live performances that's, that's, to album? I can do whatever you want to do. Sticks, to, uh, lips. Mm -hmm. Do you have a song that you want to put on this? I'd have to. You'd have to ask everybody involved. You can't just ask lips. I mean. Um, uh, yeah. No. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's got a, a solo thing himself or whatever. But I tell you, I'll probably do a song. And uh, lips, if you'd like to do some lead on it, you're more than welcome to, brother. I would love it to be a collaboration. That would be remarkable. There's a lot of people who would love to collaborate with you on something, Lips, I know that, but you two would be epic. <laughs> if you would consider talking to the right people about donating Eat Your Words, at least. Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't even get close to that record label. Oh, really? That is such a sin that that's your song and you can't even touch the record. <laughs> well, we got to wait 40 years, according to John Gallagher. Yeah. You've got to do the deal with the label, not with me. Which label? SPV. They own the licensing for that still. I'll contact really? them. So when, when, they, when, they, they, when they sell you the rights to use it, they get the money. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is a disgusting they, part of the industry. Owe, they are owed money on that music. They've got so they have to get, according to their books, they haven't recouped their money yet. 
Oh, so shit. Anything that you could get coming in, they'll take it. Uh-oh. Wow. I put it as the opening theme to every one of my episodes, and I'm wondering if I'm going to get shit for that. Yeah, well, well, I'll yeah, sue me. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. And, I, and then somebody said, oh, you could be in trouble for posting these uh, uh, recordings to the doctor. I said, well, if I get charged and thrown in jail, at least they'll have to not let me die in jail and give me my meds. The thing is, the thing is you're not gonna, you know, STV is not going to find you. They don't know who you are or where you live or not. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And I'm not coming after you. Yeah, I know that. I know Listen, that. It, it, years ago, we had a song. There's a, a movie called Sleep Away Camp. It's, it's a, like a cult movie of some sort. Mm. And somehow they used a song called Straight Between the Eyes. It's, on, it's in that movie. The band was never paid in penny. Not, I didn't even know that it existed. <laughs> it was years later we found out that it's in a movie. Okay. Aww. Well, just recently I get a letter, an email from a guy going, hey man, you want to contribute a live version since you're to, to a documentary about, no, about this movie. And I go, well, here's a here's an interesting tidbit of information. <laughs> I was never paid or never told that they were using my music. Or the ask, answer, do, I or ask. To, do I want to give you another 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 <laughs> version of the song and still make no money? No. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, wow, that's that's unbelievable. And I do feel guilty, you know. I mean, I'm sharing music, I'm using music, but each person that I've used in in any video I make, I've asked, or at least you know they've donated it, and then I've used it, and you know, there's so much now, you know. But it's so so interesting that John Gallagher said, "I just got my music." I love his voice. I just got my music back after forty fucking years. It took forty fucking years, and he's freaking out that finally he owns his own music again. And I'm just like. Oh, he's probably talking about the first oh, records with neat, neat so records. Sad. The guys probably died or fucking <laughs> it went out of business, and then that's it. There's some there's law that after forty or, years or you get it back. Died. That's it. Eventually, like I'll never own my first three albums ever. It's not right. They're owned by Unidisc Canada. <laughs> so That's not crazy. right. Well, what are they doing yeah. with them? Nothing. Whatever they want. <laughs> Nothing, right? <laughs> Nothing. That's a shame. That's a shame, you know? And I mean, you should still have the right to use it as, as in partnership and do whatever you want with it and whatever. The, the, the oh, ownership no, they, of they art wanna, is they, wrong. You know, they, 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 by, by what's on the books, it shows that we're, we're in debt and they own the money. They own the music and they make all royalties. But they're in debt people. because they're not promoting it or using it or putting it in movies and making money off it, which is their actually, freaking actually, job, right? Actually, I am. I've I know, money. but as a I've label, a it's... Money. Here's my frustration. <laughs> They'll always keep it that way because... They'll always keep it that way so they can own it. As a record label, they're supposed to promote you. They're supposed to share it. They're supposed to use it. They're supposed to make you a superstar, which you already are. But I mean, you know, that's <laughs> their job, is it not? Or is it, now they're saying that's two different jobs. It's just our job to own it. We're like, no. We did our job. Now you're paying for it. That's what they're saying. Your job is to make the music and to change the world. That's your freaking job. Yeah, our the, job the, is the, to get the, it the, out there. They gave me the money to make that music, and I haven't paid off all the. I guess I've, according to their books. But the, the way that the way that the record companies work, so that everybody understands, is one you minute get a royalty. You get a royalty rate of about a dollar a copy, of the, and that's split between the four guys that were in the original the original lineup, right? Four guys in the original lineup that was split four ways, so it got twenty five cents. A a copy. Oh my God! Not Twenty-five cents each a copy <laughs> pays off all the money that it was it cost to make those albums. And the way that they do it is they they only pay it off at a dollar 
a CD. And zero, oh, man. man. The whole industry needs to change. So it's words, one of the issues so we're talking words, about. But you have to sell basically hundreds of thousands of copies while they're making 